I think that's also kept me mentally healthy, I guess, <laughs> you could say, to just um, focus on the progress uh, I have made over the last um, few years and just to be uh, yeah excited and happy how that uh, that evolves so i think it's also always quite nice to have yeah this this goal to work towards and to know where you want to go um but eventually it just takes time it's uh, and and i'm i'm not in a rush please welcome today's guest bill borgman concept artist and learn square student who hails from Berlin and is currently studying games design. And in today's episode, we talk about Phil's stunning homework from our courses and his remarkable skills considering the early stage he is at in his career. We also cover what it's like trying to break into the industry in the current climate, what the issues and aspirations young artists have, especially with the impact of AI technology and plenty more. Let's go. Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to the uh, Learn Squared podcast, and I'm delighted to welcome on um, Phil Bogman. Welcome, Phil. Yeah, hello. Nice to have you. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking with you today. Um, like I mentioned to you a short while ago, um, and just let the guests know as well. Like Phil is a concept artist. I believe you're a student at the moment, like you're at university. Yes, um, that's correct. And as well as being a, st a student, one of a Learn Square student, and one of the reasons why I want to speak to you today is because you've done some phenomenal homework on one of our courses, and no, that, well, that got our attention, and we kept an eye on things we were doing, and we was like, okay, cool, this this person seems to get it, and they've got some cool stuff happening, so it'll be cool to give you to get to know you a little bit better and find out where this awesome creativity comes from, but. Instead of me doing that, um, it, I'll be grateful if you let the guests know, um, let the audience know who you are, what you're up to, and um, yeah, anything else cool you'd like to share with us. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you. So yeah, again, my name is Phil Borgman, and right now I'm studying in Germany, Berlin, to be more precise, uh, game design, um, and well, not not as a concept artist, but as a game designer, because uh, here in Germany, we don't have like a specific uh, university that supports this uh, really niche um, uh, job. So yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm in my fourth semester. And yeah, I guess just trying to get to through my lectures and the stuff I have to uh, submit for all my uni work. So yeah, this is where I'm at right now in life. Interesting. So yeah, I, I actually assumed that it was going to be for concept art. So it's interesting because clearly the work you've done, and I'm sure listeners who are listening right now will be clicking on your links in our description to check your work out as we speak. Um, you definitely got the skills as a full-blown concept artist. So yeah, well, um, it's interesting that you're doing game design. Um, because I guess like, you know, you just look at somebody and think, okay, they work, that's all they do. As a lot of people do, they tend to do many different things. So what got you into studying game design? Was it simply, like you mentioned, not really having that concept art centric course? Or was there something else driving that? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, for, foremost, I think it was the closest thing you could study which uh, well would go into this direction so um, game design mm. is like the first thing that would come to mind um, other than illustration I would say I think illustration has like a broader area where you can learn some stuff and game design is a bit more connected um, also to this area of a concept artist which I well where I want to work in eventually <laughs> when I'm uh, mm -hmm. uh, finished with my studies. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've uh, before I applied to the uni, I well, I already was doing some work, so I knew where I wanted to go. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, the way 
to the specific uh, well job wasn't really clear to me. So this also helped me to give me a bit of a guide, I guess you could say. And uh, right. I think that was also important yeah. for me to to yeah get started and uh, have a schedule. So I think that was quite important to me. Uh, on the other side, um, it's also that uh, having a degree and a finished uh, study is quite valuable, I guess. So, uh, mm-hmm. well, especially in Germany, if you want to work anywhere, it's obviously the portfolio and uh, this the stuff you can show, but mm-hmm. um, it's also like the formalities and all that stuff is, is I think, something that mm. is something I want to have so I can have a bit of insurance, I guess. Does that make sense? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's basically yeah, sure. uh, sums it up, so, I guess. Cool. So, yeah, it's like, I know that was the case that I did, I finished my degree in 2010, and that was a similar path I had where the degree that I did was not directly what I wanted to do, so to speak, but it was the closest thing that I did. Um, But also, like you mentioned with the degree and stuff, at that point in time, it was considered, and that was my belief also, where like that was almost essential to have. Um. Yeah, yeah, I guess like for people from different countries wanting to go to a different country, that's super critical because they won't even let you in if you don't have something that's considered official. Um, so it's cool that you got saw that as a strategic way as well. Um, so how have you found the game design side of things? Like, have you been wielding it so it's like you're kind of like making it fit to your vision, or are you completely letting it take you wherever it wants to go, and then you're kind of like molding yourself around the curriculum that they're giving as well yeah i guess the last part sums that quite well to be honest i really enjoy mm-hmm. studying there it's 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 been a blast for the last one and a half years uh like with all the people i've right. met they're extremely creative and like every project we work in it's an absolute blast and yeah i mean obviously um nice. concept art is a part of uh, game design but it's also a small part so um, mm-hmm. you are required to wear uh, lots of different hats to get the job done so um, we do have concept art assignments from time to time um, right now we actually have a bit more time to uh, work on our portfolio which is quite nice so everybody can work on something inv- cool. individual But uh, when we work in teams and have like game jams or bigger projects with span over like half a year, it's, uh, yeah, it's important to do everything so the game gets done. That means like VFX, level design, um, yeah, sound design, Mm. all that sort of stuff. Of course, programming is a big, big part. Um, So, yeah, a lot of stuff you have to actually learn and uh, understand which is yeah i guess not specifically specifically related to concept art but i quite like it because it gives you a better mm. picture of like wh- what um how a game is created and how the workflow functions and yeah i think that's in itself is quite exciting to learn so yeah I guess that sums us up pretty yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Like, definitely. And I can imagine, like you just explained, that um, knowing what's required, all the different steps, um, like, do, do you find that that informs how you approach when you're coming up with concepts? Like, do, are you really thinking X amount of steps ahead because you know if I do this, that's going to solve this problem down the line? Or, um, oh, yeah, definitely. Not the case, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. And um, is that like how you would... Um, no, 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 so, so good. Is that how normally you would think generally? Um, let's say you didn't take the course. Is that like part of your nature in general? Or is being within... Being exposed to those kind of different roles is how you're kind of nurturing that, I guess, um, work ethic? Yeah, I guess like uh, knowing what is required to get the final product done um, also helps me when uh, we are working on concept art. So you you think about like game mechanics and 
you know how the game is wor works, so you know uh, what is needed, what is important, and this all obviously translate into the work uh, that I do. Um, most of the time, we do like fake screenshots. So like, um, we uh, we don't really know how the game is going to look like. We have some a sh a small prototype or whatever, and then we paint over like a gray block block out of a scene um, mm -hmm. to give like a general impression how uh, the game could look like and obviously uh, in that phase it's uh, it's important to consider the different game elements and not like ignore them and uh, build a completely different game in your in your vision because in the end uh, your work should always support uh, the view of the team so um mm -hmm. i think that's also really important to to keep in mind when uh doing some stuff there so yeah and you mentioned that obviously obviously fellow students i'm sure um what are they like are they do you have many people similar interest to yourself like concept artists using the game design course to kind of get into that field um or is it a, a mixed bag Oh, it's quite quite diverse. Like everybody has different uh, goals, so and everybody has different different passion when it comes to that, uh, which I also quite like. It's not like an, just people who want to do this one specific thing. Uh, well, obviously, then game design, the whole um, uh, university wouldn't really work in this specific. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. specific uh, specific field um so yeah i think it's it's quite interesting i mean yeah uh, of course a few people um have also set uh, as a goal that they want to work as a concept artist or well illustrator right um that kind of field but it, it varies so yeah mm. and what were like the team projects like you mentioned you worked on like projects together i remember when i was at uni um although they were rated very low there was something that i took super seriously maybe way too seriously sometimes sometimes it was for the good of everybody like we actually got the mark because of it sometimes actually to the detriment what's that experience been like for you is that something that you enjoy um what do you mean with that um i think i didn't quite get the question uh, like working uh Sure. No, working within like groups and I guess within a team, like as a collective. Yes. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, when we're working a, as a team when developing the game, and it, we all have to, yeah, get together and think about how the game is going to look like, and uh, after that, we get some prototyping done, and uh, it's going to build up eventually after time. So. Um, yeah, I guess this, this is how we work in a very short summary. Cool. And what thing have you learned the most about yourself, I guess, or something that like maybe part of the, the process working within games and the different steps that we, oh, I didn't know that that's really cool. Or maybe even personally where you thought, oh, I didn't know I was a good at this or maybe not so good at this or um you just found a new maybe avenue of interest like yeah what's the what's the most interesting thing that stood out to you since you've embarked on um this educational journey well i think uh, something that i found out was that a lot of the knowledge you well you gain from one thing like i mean for for me for example it's obviously concept art and uh, painting and photo bashing and all that stuff translates really well into other parts of uh, designing a game so when it comes to asset creation, 3D modeling, um, like setting up a scene for an environment for, for the game, um, leading the player's attention to a certain area with uh, different lighting, sound cues, animation, VFX effects. Uh, it's, it's all stuff that ties into each other quite nicely. And you can uh, use stuff you learn from this one part uh, and translate it really well to another part of uh, designing a game. So, um, yeah, it's it, 
nothing really feels like like a waste i guess you could say it's uh mm. I, I i can say i can uh i've learned quite a lot uh over the one and a half years well yeah it's not a lot but um yeah it was quite exciting to to realize that and um yeah also quite exciting so that's what i really like about uh, uh this specific field which is quite nice never gets really boring <laughs> sweet and is it like is games i know obviously you're embarking on your journey right now um is games the kind of realm you want to stay in or do you have other ambitions maybe to expand into i guess films is another one or maybe even something else yeah i mean that's what's some great uh, i mean concept art uh works both in games and uh films so uh, obviously that would something that would be interesting to to try out i mean right now where i'm standing i'm i would already be um yeah glad to just get started working uh in in this field i think that would be i guess that's my my goal right now fini finishing my studies and actually getting some work done i think that would be quite nice um and the next semester we have uh an internship so yeah we are all preparing our portfolio to get out and um obviously uh, uh trying to get some work done which is going to be quite exciting and i'm looking forward to it so it's gonna be nice oh yeah man portfolio building mine is like in perpetuity perpetuity it's just never ending um how yeah. do you find the process of building your portfolio? Is that something you relish? Is it daunting for you? And what kind of, I guess, like strategies are you deploying to kind of really curate and, I guess, get that internship that you want? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm quite enjoying the process. I mean, because I'm working on, on my art and I have... Right now, a project I'm working on, so um, we have different uh, tasks which I want to complete. Uh, so I get like a yeah, clean portfolio I can submit. And uh, I think the most important part is to, well, I mean, everybody says it, but like get feedback, which I always try to, uh, to follow that rule. Um, because obviously if somebody else looks at your work, uh, they're going to spot different things you didn't even notice. And uh, it's really nice to, to work with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, especially in, uh, in the Unity, I can ask a lot of people to just help me with the stuff I'm working on and uh, get some input there, which is uh, really nice. And yeah, I mean, I have like half a year left, so um, I got some time to get that done. So I'm actually quite excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sick. And by the way, that's very good to hear. Um, in terms of like your, I guess, hit list, is it preset like who you can apply for? Or do you have like a short list that you've already listed out and you're going to blast applications to uh, not really i mean obviously there are some some studios in mind but uh nothing specific yet uh i've been thinking about maybe going abroad and uh, doing my internship uh, somewhere else in germany um i think that would be quite interesting to try out but um uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, right now we are uh, at the stage where we are working on our portfolio. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's also depends on the the person where they want to go. Um, but right now, I well, I have a general idea where I want to work, but uh, nothing specific, sure. I guess. And I guess to expand on that question a little bit further, do you have like a vision of what you'd like to specialize in in general once you reach the industry and are a fully professional artist? Like for example, linking back to your Learn Squared work, obviously that was um, 
our intro to environment painting um, with Mache. So obviously a lot of very crisp, yes. very detailed, very lovely environments that you've made as well. And at the same time, there's a bunch of architecture, a lot of cinematic shots as well in your work. So you kind of get a sense for like, I guess what your, at least maybe for now, what your tastes are. Um, but yeah, do you have like a, a special, not speciality, so to speak, but like a kind of like a, a path that you definitely want to want to go go towards like for example myself i specialize mainly in vehicles so that's my little i guess avenue yeah. um so what's the what's the case like for yourself yeah i guess my my work i've done so far sums it up pretty well what what i like <laughs> and what i like to uh, work on so obviously uh, environment design is something that i really enjoy um building set pieces and presenting them in a in a really uh, nice way. I mean, I, I really love working on on details and getting that done. Obviously, that's for concept art. Uh, sometimes you don't have the time to do that, but it's still something I quite enjoy to get like every single detail in place mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, work on that and think about what's what's actually going on there, what is happening there. Um, Think about the backstory, about the the characters, even though they are, uh, yeah, not the focus of my my work. But uh, mm -hmm. I still, yeah, think about that part. Um, but yeah, environment design is definitely something I want to also improve upon. I think there's a, a lot of stuff uh, that I uh, want to learn. Um, because this this area is also so again so big, so there's so much stuff you can can do with environment uh, environment art, and I think it's just exciting to try out different things and uh, see what works for me mm -hmm. for that matter. So yes, sweet, oh, that's that's awesome. And you could tell like the way you're describing it, like yeah, you definitely that's your thing. Like, it's not just, uh, yeah, like, this, this is cool. Like, you, you, there's definitely something else ticking behind the scenes that's really driving this forward. Um, and to dig into that a little bit deeper, like, I guess, where does your passion or your desire to want to specialize in environments and, like you mentioned, the details to capture them, to realize them, to bring them through um, come from? Uh, I, I don't really know specifically. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess I really enjoy this kind of work for that matter. I tried out, tried out different things before I, well, got set on this, mm -hmm. uh, more specific, um, way, but, uh, like characters and also vehicle design, uh, a bit, which I also quite like, um. I'm also working on some vehicle designs at the moment, which is quite interesting. I think it's a bit different from what I usually do, but the works flow is still quite the same. So um, when working on vehicle, you obviously uh, sketch some, um, some scribbled sketches first, and uh, then you model it in 3D, texture it, and uh, bring it in Photoshop paint a bit over that so um that's the workflow is quite similar to to uh what i've done before mm. so i felt quite at home with that um yeah but uh where my my passion for that come from uh i don't know i just enjoy uh drawing and uh, mm. <laughs> painting buildings and environments uh, I think that's that's just uh, fun and exciting for me to 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 dive into that's different awesome. worlds and, and I guess that's as um, explore them. Yeah, and don't know that's that's only the that's the purest inspiration you need. Like it's just there, right? Like it's you don't need yeah, to necessarily yeah, have, I guess, a specific trigger. It's just like this thing that constantly gets your attention. Thus, you priority your attention, and then awesome things happen. Um, what about like I guess inspirations? Maybe like growing up, even now, like so maybe specifically games in particular. Like, are there certain IPs, projects, even artists who are like, yes, that is the 
a bar of quality I want to reach for or these are the things that really capture my imagination and I would love to not replicate but do something as impactful yeah I think you always have some some work or some people you look up to um, and I mean that also varies over time I think it's quite interesting to mm-hmm. to also see that in my in my work um from where i've started i was inspired by different people and now that has obviously i still think their stuff is absolutely great and and, and amazing um but my interest it shifted a little bit so uh obviously mm. uh where i'm i'm studying games i also have uh uh, played some games, um, so obviously that is a part of my inspiration. Films also, I think, is something that I I quite enjoy. Um, I guess also mm-hmm. like stories in particular. Um, but of course, like something that I was really blown away by, I, I guess, like many people, was uh, the art of the Last of Us Part Two. I think that's from from mm-hmm. what I've seen uh set a really really high standard for hyper realistic um concept art which was in in a lot of ways really detailed and uh really down to the n- uh, last detail um thought out which I actually really enjoy and was inspired uh, uh by uh, obviously like I think the last stuff I uploaded there was heavily inspired by that work. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that's where I'm at right now. Like, uh, that that kind of work. I mean, a lot of people worked on uh, on that game. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so there was a lot of uh, reference to Together, I guess, <laughs> for that specific work. Mm. Um, yeah, The Last of Us is, I guess, the whole series, the whole IP, the universe. Now, I'm sure you've seen the TV show as well. It's like, um, it's it's definitely made this mark on history in terms of, at least for creators, it's, it's almost defined a genre, created its own genre, and set the benchmark in terms of quality, in terms of what's achievable, concept art, game design, and all that kind of stuff um yeah yeah it's a it's a really special it's a really special i guess i hate the word i the phrase ip because it sounds so sterile um but yeah it's a it's a, it's a multiple things now um yeah like I, in terms of are there any particular oh, so what was your gaming experience like in in the last of us because i'm sure you're you're watching you're playing it as obviously a, 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 a gamer but then at the same time you got your artistic brain ticking in the background as well are you able to like separate when you play versus create um, or is it all kind of like happening and mashing all up at once? Yeah. I mean, obviously if you, if you work on games, you notice specific things, but uh, eventually it's, I just uh, enjoy the medium as it is. So and um, um, when I'm walking around the environment, I'm like, "Hey, that's a really, really cool bush. That this house is designed quite, quite interesting." Um, but it's, it's not like yeah. that. I'm hyper analyzing anything. I'm just eventually that just there for the ride sure. and uh, enjoying my time there. Mm. It's not that I uh, think out about uh, yeah the work um, or. What they actually uh, were thinking about when when designing this environment. Um, of course, when I work on my my own stuff, uh, I tend to look up some uh, a lot of references, and uh, sometimes I get get back to specific areas um, of the game. But it's not really uh, mm-hmm. uh, something that I combine, I guess. Mm-hmm. And what about movies? Are there like any particular movies, maybe even shows that kind of give that same, I guess, level of inspiration that Last of Us has for you? 
Yeah, I mean, there's nothing specifically coming to mind. Uh, I do enjoy like um, really epic movie movies. I can say, uh, I would say. So I've just watched uh, Troy. I think that came out two thousand and four. And they oh, have the like red uh, pit one. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, they also have like huge battles and big scenes and um, really uh, an epic and epic scenery and all that sort of stuff. And I do quite mm-hmm. enjoy that. I think that also reflects back into my work. Uh, just those epic key shots um, or like uh, huge battles. Mm-hmm. I think they are always quite exciting to. To depict yeah for sure um i guess like in, in that sense then what about the the subject matter and the topics you gravitate towards when you're going through the reference phase inspiration phase like i guess what kind of pockets of information visual inspiration um are you looking for or do, i guess does it vary project to project or do you have like your your go-to things that really like you go for okay that's for inspiration that's my go-to for buildings and architecture cinematography colors etc not really i mean it it always depends on the stuff i'm I'm working on and of course Mm -hmm. it varies uh, quite a lot um of course there's some some websites i i go to uh to buy maybe some photo reference packs uh or whatnot but nothing really in particular it uh, it depends on what i i need at uh, at the moment so yeah i mean mostly it starts obviously with an idea and maybe some some specific uh parts of work i want to get done and based on that, mm-hmm. I I look for uh, reference well around the web. I mean, the internet is uh, is pretty big, so uh, there's I don't really have a problem f- finding what I need to to get the job done. I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in terms of I guess fellow peers and artists, and for example, are there any i guess the heroes you have or again artists that you kind of like your go-to's is again that's the benchmark for yourself um yeah i mean i mean obviously there are there are some um i'm probably just gonna gonna butcher all their their names uh because i can't really pronounce them but i mean uh i guess derek derek Tsaboki. I, I think that's how yep, you, yep. how you pronounce him. Um, was obviously an in, 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 uh, well, an early inspiration. Um, I really liked his uh, his loose painterly work, which was uh, yeah he could like depict a scene in like a few few brush strokes and keep it loose until the end, which was really good. Uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing what he what he could do. Um, Besides that, um, I think I have to to actually uh, uh, look up some stuff here. From yeah, I mean uh, Romain John John Dua. Jesus, it's it's pretty difficult yep, to yep. Roman, yeah 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 to pronounce the names. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he also got got a course on on learn learn squared. I um, haven't got around to to he do, sure but does, yes. I mean, his stuff and uh, this this is his work. Um, this was also quite inspirational for me. I mean, the stuff he did for Ghost of Tsushima. Um, yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's absolutely amazing. I think that's like also what I would like to set as my benchmark where I want to get there eventually. Um, it's I think it's also always nice to have that a bit of that goal and um, yeah, when working on your stuff to always go back to and uh, see how how those people did it. I think it's also quite ex- uh, exciting, yeah. Um, it's interesting you mentioned Roman there because when you were talking about 
how you like trying to like concept art is quick it's iterative but you want to capture those details and find ways to really let them come across i guess while still meeting the needs of the speed or the the quick results that concept art needs and that immediately me thought of a conversation i had um with roman who is i'd say like a master of that like he his level of precision into every aspect is yeah, he's like he's hardcore into that, and that's reminding yeah, me that's incredible. of that, and the fact that he's one of your go-to people. That I guess is just like you know sums it all up. Like it's, it, yeah, it's it's cool. Um, it's really cool to see. Um, but at the same time, I guess I don't know how it is for you, but you can get maybe lost in inspiration, or maybe you can get misguided perhaps sometimes when you're measuring yourself up against you know, epic artists and industry giants. Is that something that happens to you? And if so, how do you keep yourself not falling into that rabbit hole of measuring yourself up against others rather than focusing on how you can elevate yourself? Is that something that happens to you sometimes? Yeah, I mean, I think it happens to everybody once in a while that they they compare this stuff to uh, um, those, yeah, as you said, uh, giants. Um, but... Obviously, that's in most cases, yeah, unrealistic because, um, I mean, in, in that uh, sense that uh, I think for myself, I still have like a lot of stuff to learn and I'm completely fine with that. I mean, I'm mm. I'm happy yeah. to just look at back at the stuff that I did, did a while ago and uh, see how uh, I'm improved. And I think that's also kept me mentally healthy i guess <laughs> you could say to just um mm. focus on the progress uh i have made over the last um, few years and just to be uh, yeah excited and happy how that uh that evolves so i think it's also always quite nice to have yeah this this goal to work towards and to know where you want to go um, but eventually it just takes time it's, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not in a rush, like, uh, I would take my time and I will end up, uh, well, where, where the road leads me. So, um, yeah, it's, I guess it's not something I want to stress out about. It's, uh, yeah, it works for me. <laughs> Sick. That's. That's very well put, and that's also great to hear because um, it it can happen like where you do lose track of that sometimes, and the fact that you got that centered and you know like you you definitely accept that it's the journey and you're on the journey, and obviously the journey has the different ingredients that it has, but it's okay because it's still moving forward. That's that's really really cool because a lot of things can get thrown at us and make us bubble even. Um, even even for the people that are most like you know very focused on things um but things can try and derail you but yeah your attitude there is spot on and that will make sure that you'll always stay on track um where does that mentality come from if that's not too i guess vague of a question to ask because um it's very refreshing to hear and i know a lot of people who definitely struggle with getting their mindset into that particular space is there something that you like i guess things you practice or maybe lifestyle choices that you have that make you like that or is that just who phil is that's that's the who you are yeah uh i don't really know where this comes from i guess i mean uh mm -hmm. when i decided that i want to work in that field i yeah, I just started to practice and yeah, I mean, my, obviously my work was pretty rough back then, but yeah, I mean, I allowed myself to take, take the time and take like one step at a time and just mm. seeing how this, that specific approach worked also gave me the confidence to, um, yeah, to not fall into that pit that you explained right there. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think that that's something I've uh, I followed for quite some time, and I'm quite quite happy with. So 
Yes. Cool. You mentioned a little bit a while ago about doubling into different things. As you mentioned, like vehicle design and having a similar workflow. Are there other avenues that you would like to dabble into or tap into or even work in moving forward? Or would you specifically like to have everything kind of like centered around environments? Yeah, I mean, I guess it all leads back to environments, but uh, also something I'm, I would mm -hmm. love to learn is uh, obviously storytelling and world building. I think that's something uh, really exciting to learn. Um, and yeah, obviously with that comes uh, designing again a different environment but i think those are like uh, different areas i would like to explore a bit more which could be interesting also like uh, asset designs would be something that i want to try out obviously that's something we we already are doing at uh, at uni but um mm -hmm. i think it's also quite exciting and uh, yeah it, it again follows a quite similar workflow to what i'm doing right now so should also be quite interesting. Mm. Um, in terms of your workflow, has it changed much since you started out? Has it like added new tools? I'm sure a university they're teaching you a specific set of tools as well. I guess what's your pipeline at the moment? Yeah, I mean, my pipeline at the moment is that uh, first I'm sketching my idea in Photoshop when I start out. Then obviously, um, well, right now I'm uh, working in, in Blender. So quite a lot of, uh, of the stuff that I do is, uh, is done there. I've tried out uh, ZBrush for hard surface modeling, mm -hmm. which also was uh, quite interesting. But uh, yeah, also, yeah. Also, I tried out uh, Octane Renderer, which was also quite interesting to, to see how that works. Um, and uh, like the specific tools you can you can use there and uh, where you can, what you can do with that, especially like the renders you can get out of Octane are mm -hmm. quite, uh, quite beautiful and um, also a bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, after texturing and lighting is done, I get all my stuff back to Photoshop and uh, finish it up with uh, yeah, a lot of over overpainting. Uh, depends on the quality of the, the work I did beforehand, obviously. Um, but yeah, I guess that sums up my uh, workflow quite well. Uh, mm -hmm. If I'm not doing s and uh, sketches at the beginning, oh yeah, sorry. Um, uh, mostly I do like no, no, please. Uh, idea. I think yeah, it's a delay. Frames. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. And um, ah, cool. So cool. Uh, yeah, rough sketches. Sweet. And like, do you find that you're like obviously you're clearly open to trying different packages and softwares? Do you find that you have like a set go-to workflow if that's not too ambiguous um, and you're happy to see if things work and if they don't, they get rejected? Um, or are you happy to like change up tomorrow if something new came along? Yeah, I mean, I would, I think it's uh, again quite uh, important to be open to different uh, softwares and try out what they can uh, can do for you um obviously with a uh, with a state of ai and uh, that sort of stuff uh, it's also quite interesting how that can tie into to the to the uh, this workflow um and yeah i've seen some interesting approaches from people how they uh, utilize this uh, new uh, tech um, for like different mm -hmm. textures or if they need a specific thing working in Blender, they can write some code for that, which is uh, quite interesting. I didn't know mm -hmm. that before. Um, 
But yeah. yeah, I think that's something I also want to to explore at, at some point. And I mean, right now, again, I'm I'm studying. I'm, I I I allow myself to try out different things and uh, different approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I have some some deadlines and stuff that has to get done for uni, but um, I still have have the freedom to explore and uh, see where that leads me. Mm. Um, and I think that's a great attitude to have, like at least in the student phase, I guess without us, we're always students, but I know what you mean, like, you know, the university phase, um, pre breaking into industry. Um, what are the uni kind of like, I guess, focusing on in terms of maybe packages? Um, that you guys should learn so for example when i was at uni this is like late 2000s like you know 2006 2010 it was basically autodesk stuff so like um yeah. it, was, it was industrial design hard surface it was a uh, studio tools and then eventually maya um obviously F blender had just come out then and it was considered a joke fast forward to now it's the complete opposite almost yeah. where blender's the go to um but i know like with some studios they still have a set pipeline maybe it's maya 3ds max or what have you um some companies that are emerging now are happy to do everything in blender and unreal so what i like the, what is the consensus that you're being taught of the go-to softwares because for us it was pitched as that's industry standard if you don't know this you won't get hired so what's the attitude or i guess the um the mentality that they are bestowing upon yourselves with your approach to packages and I guess what to learn and what to specialize in, in terms of tools. Yeah. I mean, for the projects we're working on, um, we got taught uh, unity and, uh, unreal. So that was like the software where we are developing, uh, developing games. We also had some courses in, uh, blender and Maya also like, some bit of InDesign stuff, uh, but uh, eventually um, we are given a lot of freedom to use the tools uh, we think uh, work for the stuff we need, which I quite like. So it's not like, um, hey, you you need to use Photoshop to get this specific piece done. Uh, it's because it also varies from from person to person what they what they use. Um, obviously, when uh, designing games, I also have been using most of the time Blender because yeah, that's something I'm quite familiar with. So for asset production, that was my uh, yeah my go-to, and. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, besides that, Unreal is an absolutely uh, fantastic program um, to use. And I mean, ju you just put some stuff together and it already looks absolutely fantastic and hyper-realistic. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, regarding the programs, I think that that is the general overview that we are getting taught at uh, our uni. Cool. Um and based on your, I guess, journey so far, where do you think, or what kind of tools do you think you'll be using going forward? As like, like for example, Photoshop has almost been a staple ever since I was at college, yes. then yeah. uni, then so on and so forth. It's always been there. Um, so like, what kind of staples do you think? Okay, no matter what, this is the tool or tools that is going to be the go-to. Like, it's the thing. Um, for example. To show you how old I am, I remember when smartphones had just come onto the scene and people were still using button phones oh, yeah. and some people were very stubborn about it. Um, but you could always see that you can try as hard as you want. You're going to end up with a touchscreen smartphone sooner rather than later, either by choice or by force. Um, so I guess in, in a, the industry sense, what do you think that's going to be going forward, at least at least from your point of view? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think you hit it at, at quite a lot, but uh, I mean, AI is a big topic and uh, quite uh, quite new, and uh, it's really interesting in what direction that will lead us, and yeah, what kind of 
also opportunities and workflows um, those enable for that matter. Um, I mean, of course, when it comes to software, it's still Photoshop, I guess. I haven't found a other mm -hmm. alternative mm -hmm. I could use. Uh, when it comes to 3D programs, uh, obviously, yeah, Blender is, I think, is absolutely fantastic. And also the way you can modify this specific program. And uh, well, like, I mean, all the add-ons you can add to that, it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think those, those two are the main programs I feel quite comfortable right now i mean that can change in yeah in a couple of years but uh i guess it's where this is where i'm at right now cool and ai yeah let's let's go on to the the burning topic that's basically taking over as we speak um and you've kind of hinted there like i guess what your thoughts are on it but what's your attitude towards it? Do you see it as a threat? Do you see it as something that's potentially empowering? Um, for example, I mean, the discourse around it, I've spoken to people who think it's, if it's, if it's continued as it is, it's going to spell the end of everything. Um, I'm being dramatic there, but you know, like, I guess industry's over, there's nothing left. Or others are saying that, no, it's going to be something that's going to really enable us and allow us to do whatever you want. And your perspective, I'm very interested in hearing because you're at the beginning of your hero's journey in towards, towards a career. And it's interesting to see how almost like you're wetting your lips a little bit, like as to how to use AI for your needs. Um, but rather than me assume that of yourself, I'd love to get your opinion on yeah, it's AI in general, because a, a year ago it was considered, oh, look at this thing, it's cute, look what you can do, yeah, you can make yeah. all these cool things. A year later, we're talking about it like it's, you know, the next great add-on or big, you know, like, yeah, something critical to a workflow. Um, so, yeah, a lot of questions rolled up in one. Over to you, man. Yeah, yeah, I try, uh, try to to get through them, but, um, yeah, of course, a very, very spicy, uh, spicy topic. Um yeah, I see indeed. I, uh, I think yeah, I think some from uh, from what I've come across, uh, it's it varies depending on where you look. I guess I think uh, the state AI is right now it has a lot of legal problems attached to it, which make the, the whole situation quite complicated and. Uh, I think that's something that has to be uh, uh, worked out uh, for well AI and all the tools to yeah to be fully accepted. I guess um, for me, I I actually um, uh, haven't used any AI yet. I have seen a lot of workflows and. Uh, people um, utilizing the the power of AI, which I was always like, uh, yeah, quite blown away by what uh, what the software can actually um, actually do. Um, I think it can uh, help uh, an artist, uh, whatever he's doing. Um, get around a lot of the the boring parts or the stuff you don't want to do, I guess. I mean, I think that's, that's something for me that I want to, to try out. And what I'm talking about in specific, uh, specifically is like, maybe finding a specific texture you want to use. Uh, like if you are um, modeling a, a Mac or uh, a, yeah, a spaceship or whatever, um, to just, ask for a specific texture you want to use. And I've seen people uh, combine that with like displacement maps and getting like incredible results out of it. And just skipping a step for like creating that texture by yourself and or looking, searching for it. I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite good to, to see that. Um, yeah, again, 
idea generation uh, to to generate uh, maybe spark some inspiration where you want to go in what direction uh, maybe get some some references done and uh, see where that, that leads you um, I also have seen the workflow where you you draw something or model something and then let the AI uh, take over and uh, yeah give you something back that uh you maybe sort of maybe didn't and uh based on that you can uh, improve the design and change stuff you you don't like uh i think it's it's, it's the important part is to uh not consider the stuff that i gives you as a finished product um but yeah, just as like little snippets uh, you uh, you can use for for your work. So get just get over like the the stuff that you um, yeah that is not that exciting. So to get to the to the fun part, uh, I think that is quite interesting. But I mean, eventually it's uh, something yeah that's here, and we we all have to deal with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's my, uh, my general opinion on the topic. Mm -hmm. And what's the kind of like mood with your peers, your fellow students, like, I guess, what's the kind of vibe of how they're treating it? Like, is it similar to yourself or are you seeing a complete range of opinions and emotions on the matter? Uh, it differs. I mean, it's, um, obviously, uh, uh, depends on who you asked. Uh, some people are like like really excited and trying out uh, different stuff they can do with it um, and how they can integrate it into their workflow. Um, of course, also uh, a lot of people are yeah also quite afraid. I guess it's a wrong word, but. Uh, I mean, they see what the stuff can do and uh, see their own work and think they're going to be uh, not able to find a job in, in a few years because of it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's completely uh, different from, uh, yeah, from person to person. Mm -hmm. And I guess let's dabble into a little bit of a doom and gloom maybe or fear mongering where do you think what do you think the dark side is to ai because obviously it's like super super fresh right now like it's it's almost the form isn't realized it's very ambiguous like sauron if for all the lord of the rings fans out there um wh what do you think are the downsides maybe to to what ai can maybe unwantingly give to us yeah i think that's a that's a really uh also difficult question for that um i mean obviously a lot of people who maybe want to get into uh, into art and and drawing and they see this stuff pop up on instagram or on different websites and think to themselves hey this this program can do that in like uh, the blink of an eye and uh i'm nowhere near uh near that part of quality and it's probably not worth it uh, even trying to pursue this uh, this kind of path with which i think um is, is something that is quite happens quite frequently that people get discouraged by uh, yeah by his gloom and the like the the power that ai brings to the table yeah and um, just before we uh, wrap up, I guess like any final maybe thoughts or words from yourself and what are you excited for, I guess, in the near future? And what can we be excited for coming from yourself in the near future too? Maybe like a new project or two? Um, yeah, I'd love to know that. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now I'm I'm actually working on the... and I mean, we've we've talked about... Uh, that I'm working on in uh, vehicles right now. So right now I'm also following 
uh, well, another lesson from from Learn Square, I guess. And uh, I'm trying to connect uh, the lesson with the stuff that I'm doing for uni. So um, I'm working obviously on a portfolio. So I have a bit of, uh, I guess, bigger project I'm working on right now because, um, yeah, in a sense, the different artworks that, that I'm doing for that should be connected in a, um, yeah, Korean universe. So uh, I think that's that's also something yeah that I want to to deliver at least uh, before I want to get uh, get an internship. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's something that I'm working on right now. Sweet. Yo, thank you so much for jumping on. It was a pleasure chatting with you and connecting with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. A massive thanks to Phil for joining us. And I'm really excited to see how his career progresses and of course, more amazing art from him. Be sure to give him a follow and check out his work by hitting the links in our bio. I've been your host, Aaron Dander. Till next time.